Welcome to L is for Leadership in an Emergency on the Political Trenches, Local Government at Work. Today, we are honored to have Edson Mayor Kevin Zahara. Kevin, in the last month, has been on the front lines of true leadership embodiment. On Friday, May 5th, Yellowhead County and the town of Edson issued immediate evacuation order due to a wildfire burning out of control near the community. The mayor's updates on social media and steadfast leadership during the wildfires made him a source of knowledge and trusted information for residents and Canadians witnessing the horrors in his communities. Kevin, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, but I want to first start off by asking how life has been since the evacuation order was lifted and residents have returned home after the few days being evacuated. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Chris. I think um, certainly for the first couple of weeks being back, there was a, a certain level of anxiety within the community. Uh, the fire is still burning out of control, um, and it was still uh, quite active until we got some rain. So there was there was a lot of anxiety, and I think there still is a little bit uh, in our community that uh, we may have to leave again. Uh, things have gone much better. We got lots of fire breaks, lots of people working on the fire. We've had some rain and things have greened up. So we're we're positive that we're in a in a good place and uh, just thankful for all the crews that stepped up and helped our community out. Now, as I said in the introduction, you 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 were quite prominent on social media during the first few days and even during the evacuation, even to today. For you and your role as mayor to your residents, how big of a responsibility in that leadership role did you put on yourself to make sure that the information you were providing to residents was accurate, but you also combated the misinformation that might have been out there via social media? So I think one of the big things is in an emergency like we were faced with, uh, we want to make sure that we got accurate information, as you as you mentioned. Um, there was... Uh, Leading up to the evacuation, it was quite noticeable in the community that things were changing. Skies were dark. Uh, things were uh, not looking very good. It was windy. Um, but we didn't um, have any concrete information as to needing to evacuate at that point in time early in that afternoon. Things changed drastically. Um, so getting the information out in a timely ma manner is really, really important, but also the accurate information. And I'm actually quite thankful that um, we did not evacuate the town a little bit sooner uh, because the original plan was to evacuate to the community of Edmonton. Highway 16 was shut down, which meant all the residents would have had to go up Highway 32. Had we done that, uh, we would have had a situation on our hands because a wildfire broke, up on, broke out on Highway 32 which ended up closing down that highway just as we were about to issue the evacuation notice. So that's why our community went uh, towards Hinton and Jasper. Um, so throughout the emergency, um, information was changing uh, rapidly because of the weather conditions, uh, because new information was coming to light. So um, we really uh, tried to drive home the message, especially uh, following the evacuation that please listen to official channels for information because there's so many rumors people start talking and then it becomes fact with it in actual fact it, it, it has no uh, basis in reality um and people were pretty good about that once we started getting that message out there when we met with evacuees uh, we myself uh, as the mayor of edson um I was getting information on the fly as well. Um, so basically before we met with the evacuees, that's when we got our information. Um, so it was really important that uh, we, we tried to communicate in a time and manner of making sure that information was accurate. As you were starting to go through this process and actually even now too afterwards, have you been in communication with other mayors or other Reeves and shared information with them about tactics that worked or tactics that didn't or providing advice back and forth on how to manage this situation as best as you could, staying calm and providing that structure you were talking about? Uh, not at this point in time. I think everybody's kind of been dealing with their own emergencies uh, throughout the province. Uh, our, our mayors in our region communicate on a regular basis. I think one of the things that I am most proud of, which, pro which won't get a lot of attention out there, is the town of Edson and Yellowwood County joined emergency coordination centers um, on that Friday. Uh, be, prior to that, it was a Yellowhead County emergency. There was no impact to the town of Edson. 
However, that changed rapidly on Thursday night when a, when a new fire broke out and it came directly towards the town of Edson. So on Friday morning, uh, the directors of emergency management for both communities said, we're going to join forces here. And staff from both municipalities worked together uh, in one central hub. Um, and that helped us utilize resources and helped us communicate because what was impacting the town of Edson was also impacting Elwood County residents. Uh, so I am incredibly proud of the work that we've done. And I think it's actually going to build a stronger relationship between the two communities, especially when it comes to emergency management, uh, because that was key. We were always on the same message. And, um, you know, Yellow County has been dealing with, with this um, emergency for a lot longer than the town of Edson has. And uh, the town of Edson has lent them some staff and support. Uh, but Yellow County is always there for the town of Edison as well. So um, it really shows the importance of regional partnerships and working together. And I think there's going to be lots of learning. And I certainly would be willing to share that with anybody uh, moving forward. Sure. You've uh, obviously got a, a key role during a crisis like this, as would the Reeve say. What is the rest of council doing during this time as well? How do they help out? Well, that was the interesting challenge. As I mentioned, uh, information was changing rapidly. So it's really hard to keep council in the loop, especially when you're spread out between three communities, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we had we had people that were in Hinton. We had people that were in Jasper. Um, so we tried to keep them updated as much as possible. And I think the key role for them was they were uh, around a lot of evacuees. So uh, making sure they had the correct information and that they could clarify any misinformation that might be out there. Um, myself and the mayor of the county, uh, we were, um, you know, traveling between communities, uh, evacuation centers, um, and not everybody has social media and not everybody was attending these meetings. So uh, I think councillors had a really important role in uh, making sure people had accurate information and also just being visible, seeing that, okay, there's leadership in the community uh, in Hinton and in Jasper and in other places um, and just being that conduit of information. Uh, really an emergency situation, it's, it's the mayors that are, are responsible for communicating. Um, and I think one of the things for the general public to realize is the mayors are not the ones making the decisions. It is the emergency responders and those that are equipped with that knowledge making those decisions. The mayor of Edson did not evacuate the, the town of Edson. It was a, 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 that call was made by a group of people that certainly know a lot more than I do about emergency management and have the information to make that call. The only thing that the, the mayor of Edson did was issue the state of local emergency, giving them that power to make those decisions. You're right. You, you didn't order the evacuation, but your residents will look at you and assume that you did because you are the mayor. You are the one who's elected. Uh, yes, there's people behind the scenes in the Emergency Operations Command Center who are dealing with the actual emergency on a day to day basis. How important was it for you to inform the residents, but also acknowledge to them that you aren't the final say on these issues because you are the leader of the community or the leader of the town of Edson. They're looking to you for answers and you can't give them the answer. It's not my decision. You have to give them the answer. Here's what we're doing. So how important was it for you to communicate to the residents in an effective manner, but also inform them that I'm not making the decisions of when you can come back because I saw some of the social media posts of when can I get back in? Am I able to get back in? Is my house still standing? So w from your perspective and dealing with that in Edson, how did you combat the challenges of being the mayor when your decision isn't really the be all end all anymore? Um, you know, I didn't really run into many situations where that was really an issue. Um, you know, I think the main communication piece in this is that we are relying on information from Ag and Forestry, who is on the front lines battling this wildfire, the experts in the area. Um, so just relaying that information and making sure that people understand there's a team of people that are discussing and making decisions as we move forward. And first and foremost, our number one priority is the safety of our residents. Everything else comes second to that. So, um, you know, uh, on this, I think it was a Saturday night. Yeah, it was a Saturday night. Uh, things were really dicey. I didn't think people would be able to go home anytime soon. We uh, uh, had a fire that was moving towards a, a substation, a power substation. 
um, and it was not looking good. And we were we basically were getting this information just before we went on stage in Hinton and, and then later Jasper. And it was a concern that we actually may have to move people from Jasper because they were going to run out of power. And I think the, um, the, the what we said at that time is we are not going to allow people to go back until we feel it is safe. And things changed within 24 hours. The weather uh, cooperated, wind shifted, and all of a sudden on Sunday, uh, 24 hours later, we were able to tell people that they were going to be going home the next day. Um, so relying on that expert advice, relying on the information, and really in, in situations like wildfires, Mother Nature has the biggest role to play in all of it. Um, and no man's going to stop Mother, Mother Nature from what, what she plans on doing. Um, the wall of fire that was coming towards of Edson when I left on the Friday night, I thought our town was was done for, at least portions of it was going to be done for. And thankfully, uh, through uh, the cooperation of Mother Nature and, the, and those crews that were battling this, this blaze, that did not happen. Hmm. During your time there, uh, before and after, what was the most unexpected thing that you might have encountered? Is there anything that struck you as odd? Anything that struck me as odd... Um, that's, that's a really, really good question. Actually, I was really surprised from my perspective, how smoothly we were able to evacuate the community. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of preparing for it. Uh, we had hoped to have an alert out, uh, but this situation unfortunately changed drastically within just a few hours that that fire moved over 20 kilometers in just a couple hours. Um, so I was really uh, surprised by the smoothness of the evacuation and absolutely blown away by the generosity of the people in Hinton and Jasper. It was unbelievable. Um, people opening up their homes to complete strangers, dropping off food, businesses, just incredible. I can't say enough about uh, the communities of Hinton and Jasper and, and uh, as well as Parks Canada opening up their campgrounds. Uh, to our evacuees. Grand Cash took a whole bunch of people in Rocky Mountain House as well. So I think, you know, post-COVID, um, I think there's been a, a, you know, there's been a lot of challenges and, and uh, um, conflict, and that all went away in this emergency. Um, and people came together and helped out neighbors and helped out one another, which was fantastic to see. Did you see any sort of an impact on the, either the fire or the evacuation or both? on your municipal team, your you, your colleagues on council and your municipal staff? What's the impact been on them? Um, so our, our, our town of Edson employees were phenomenal. And, you know, I'm going to say that Yellow County as well. I, I can't speak for Yellow County, uh, but they've been dealing with this emergency for over a month. So they're tired. They're really, really tired. Uh, town of Edson staff, uh, it was stressful. They have families that they had to worry about as well. But they were answering phones in the in the ECC 24 hours a day, and they were uh, at the evacuation center. And so, um, you know, we we certainly want to make sure our employees are taken care of. And uh, I can't say enough. The, the 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 team at the town of Edson really stepped up, and I'm incredibly proud of them uh, for all the work they've done. Uh, you know, people come up to me and say, "Mary, great job." I had very little to do. I was the communicator. Um, obviously, you know, a lot weighted on my shoulders, but the people actually doing the work on the front lines, those are our staff and our volunteer firefighters and and all those, there's contractors out there that were helping out. So uh, just a huge shout out to them. I, I want to talk about yourself here for a second, because you, you mentioned the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. The You, as mayor, have had to deal with a few emergencies over the last few years. COVID-19, now the Alberta wildfires. I can imagine this is not what you want, signed up for when you decided to run for mayor of your community. What have you learned about yourself in this role as mayor to make you feel like you've become a better leader in these emergency situations? Because unfortunately, I'm going to say this, and I don't want to say it out loud, but I'm going to, wildfires are going to continue to happen. People are going to have to get evacuated. So what did you learn about yourself that you hope other mayors who are listening to this, other counselors who might be listening to this, might think to themselves, if this is the advice that Kevin's giving me, I'm going to take it and run with it. I think being true to yourself, but but being calm in an emergency is, is the key role. Like people are looking to their, their, their community leaders uh, and to provide accurate information. Don't answer questions you don't you don't know the answers to. 
uh, and don't make suggestions if you don't know uh, what's going to happen. Uh, these are fluid situations. Uh, working with your, your senior administration, uh, your directors of emergency management. Uh, for myself, I think what I've learned about myself is that uh, um, I can develop much thicker skin now. Uh, there's things that just don't bother me as much as probably when I when I got into this role. And understanding the importance of, of the job you're trying to do. Uh, and understanding people may not be happy with those decisions, but that's okay. Um, don't make decisions based on the next election. Make, make decisions based on what's good for the overall health and safety of your community. Um, you know, historians will look back at COVID-19 and, and make their own judgment calls on what was right, what was wrong. Um, I've always taken the approach. I'm working with the information I have at the time. And uh, if people want to... to uh, um, criticize or uh, hold me accountable for that, that's totally fine. That's what I signed up for. And then on the flip side of that, what do you hope that your residents or people who are going to be evacuated know that while these fires are still burning and people are still evacuated in your area, not in the town of Edson, but in the Yellowhead County, what do you hope people take from what happened in that uh, emergency that they can potentially use if it happens again or if the town has to be evacuated again hopefully it doesn't but we we don't know right things can change and like you said we're at the will of mother nature i think the the big part is being prepared in an emergency um i've advocated for being prepared but i wasn't prepared i didn't have my emergency kit ready to go um so i think that was a key takeaway um, a lot of people didn't know what to take. They were taking random things. There's actually a, a thing on a Facebook group talking about the weird things that they took and somebody took a spatula and somebody took, you know, these, these weird things that you don't know what you're supposed to take and you're, you're panicked and, and you don't have a lot of time. So I think being better prepared, um, understanding your neighbors, understanding, you know, being connected to that, understanding where to get information, um, that was, I think that was probably the biggest challenge is the amount of people that were contacting me directly. And unfortunately, in emergency, I am at capacity and everybody's at capacity that you can't respond on an individual basis. So making sure uh, people are getting that information uh, in a timely member, manner and remembering that people have lost their homes, um, quite challenging. Uh, we've been fortunate in our community um, it was a big undertaking evacuating our town, but we didn't suffer as much as many other communities in, in, in the province. So thinking about them and, and trying to support them as well. Jump in at the moment. You and Chris had a bit of a chat earlier about information and disinformation, misinformation. Now looking back on this, do you think, well, presumably the, uh, the town and the county were providing useful, timely, correct information to people who needed it. Do you think that has an impact on where people will start to get information from or whether it will change their opinions of reliable sources of information? I think uh, more people are now more aware of um, the information that is provided by the municipalities. Uh, certainly, I think the thing that, that really worked well for us is we set up a, a time each day that we were going to talk directly to our residents. No information, no major update was going to happen about our communities until we talked to the people in person and gave them the opportunity to ask any questions that they may have. Um, you know, I give a, a huge shout out to our CAOs, uh, Christine Beveridge and Luke Mercier over at the county uh, for the work that they did. Um, they're not in charge of the emergency either. They are, uh, they're the CAOs in the municipality. The director of emergency management is, is responsible for uh, the emergencies for, for the town of Edson was Bob Beck and Albert Berry for the county, and they did a fantastic job. Um, but I think one of the things I'm proud of is we did those um, updates in person and we made sure that media wasn't in the room because some of this stuff is is quite sensitive in terms of people's property, their lives. Um, and, and the media was very responsive to that. Uh, they understood that, you know, things may be asked or, or questions that they may not be comfortable asking in front of a camera or the media. So uh, there was a public portion and then there was a, a closed portion for the residents themselves so that was uh, i think some really good good information there sorry i want to jump in on that because you mentioned the media 
did you see the role of the media as uh, as a as a source of sort of trusted information you can get out there? Because I can imagine we as I used to work for a municipality in northern Alberta and there have been numerous fires in the area that the moment something like this happens, your phone rings off the hook, your social medias are flooded with interview requests. How do you get the information out there while using the traditional media, quote unquote, traditional media, because not everyone has Facebook, not everyone has Twitter, not everyone has LinkedIn. So you have to use them, but you can't just willy nilly give them all the information that they need, because like you said, you have to go to the people first. So as the mayor, as the leader, what role did you see the media playing in the emergency during your this recent wildfire? Well, being a rural municipality, um, you know, it's challenging because there's so much information that you need to get out there and, and you know, the, the news networks are only going to use a 10 second clip. So um, I'll be quite frank, it's it's not really valuable, I don't think, for the local residents necessarily to get the information they need in terms of what's, uh, what's going on. And unfortunately, we've seen uh, over the years, uh, less local media, less local radio stations, less newspapers. Um, so it's really trying to get that information out directly through the municipal social channels, the websites, and directly to residents. I seen the media, um, and, and we didn't, if we had nothing new to say, we did, like I didn't respond to a lot of media calls. Um, but once I had information that I thought was valuable, uh, then we started arranging interviews. And it's really to get information out to the, to the larger community um and to the province about what's going on in your your area so you're not so they know what's happening within the Edson region so it's not forgotten about um one of the biggest challenges that we have in the town of Edson is uh, our evacuees were less than seven days so they only were out of their homes for three days but there's expenses that have um they've incurred and some of these folks don't have a lot of resources that's whether or not they get food on their table right or uh, they may not have money for gas in their vehicles. And that was one of the big concerns if we had to evacuate again. And unfortunately, government programs up until this point are not helping. Uh, insurance deductibles are really high. And the Red Cross hasn't been very helpful either, to be frank. So, um, you know, getting that information, making sure people are aware that we need to improve these programs for individuals. Uh, not saying that they need $1,200, but, you know, uh, with receipts, I think that on a daily basis, people should be able to be reimbursed. Uh, through a government program and that's something that we'll be lobbying for moving forward i, I don't want to ask this question but i kind of have to this happened at the beginning of a provincial wide election this was uh not a foreseen uh, issue that was going to happen but you guys basically became the epicenter of the provincial election for a few days um you talk about the programs that the provincial government rolls out was it easier or was it harder to be in contact with the provincial government during a provincial election? And again, I hate to ask this question. It's just an important one because things like this can happen during an election and you are the front line and you have to sort of be that conduit between the provincial government and your residents sometimes. So I have to say that our MLA was absolutely phenomenal. He was at the evacuation centers. He was he came to see me the afternoon of uh, before we evacuated. At that point in time, we didn't even think we were going to have to evacuate. Um, so he was in regular contact. So so locally through my MLA, um, it was very easy. We had lots of conversations and we had some pretty tough conversations as well. But he's always been open to that. Uh, but getting response from government during elections impossible. Um, and they can't change programs. They can't do this. They can't do that. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult, um, uh, difficult time. Um, and of course, they're focused on their own elections um, as well. So, you know, I think there's some talk that maybe having an election in the middle of fire seasons, maybe not the best idea because we run into this often. Um, but I, I certainly hope that the government moving forward now that the election is done is going to look back and look at some of these challenges and, and hopefully address them. Um, uh, you know, it's easy to be... For me to be critical um, about about the the province, but you know this this is unprecedented. I don't care which government's in power. You're when you have a hundred out of control wildfires, nobody's going to be able to have the resourcing to to deal with all of that. Um, I do think they were a little ill prepared. Um, unfortunately, I think they didn't have the staff in place. Uh, but they are facing the same challenges every other organization is. So um, I hope that we learn and we we do better next time.
My last question to you, uh, Kevin, is actually kind of related to that is when we heard certainly more more uh, tragedy coming from places like um, more from, uh, Wood Buffalo or from Slave Lake, we were lessons that we learned from that we were able to incorporate it in other places too. If, uh, towns like Edson or Rocky, uh, the Rain Valley, those kind of places, then uh, are there things that we can learn to implement in future fire seasons that might make things a little bit easier to deal with? Yeah, I think, you know, you look at the Slave Lake Wildfire Report, there was a huge amount of information that I think is beneficial. And unfortunately, over the years, we've seen budgets cut. And there, there's reasons for that. Um, uh, I think first and foremost, climate change is here, whether you believe in it or not. Um, and we're seeing more active wildfires. We're seeing bigger wildfires. And we need to make sure that we have the resources in place. And look at forested communities and what we can do to mitigate it. We have fire smart programs, but that's not enough anymore. Um, you know, um, and looking at ways that we can hopefully uh, improve the safety of our communities, but also I think educating our public to be more prepared, uh, especially in the forester communities. I think now that we've gone through this here in Edson, I think all residents are more prepared. I'm thankful that we are a pretty big uh, RVing community. So a lot of people just hooked up their RVs and left, but they had no water in their tanks. They were still winterized, um, but companies stepped up and helped out with that. Um, understanding uh, the dangers of wildfires in our communities. Southern Alberta, a lot more to do with, uh, you know, grass fires or floods, um, but we gotta be prepared for that. And I hope that all levels of government look at that. Uh, it's interesting to note that the town of Edson itself um, did not have a fire protection uh, structural unit in our fire department. And that was in our budget this year because we knew that wildfire risk was uh, ever really increasing. So we had that in our budget this year. Unfortunately, the fire happened before we could get it. So uh, we're going to be more prepared as a municipality as well. Uh, one of the discussions our council had is, well, you know, we can look at other communities and use theirs in, in case of a wildfire. Well, guess what? This, this is the case in point all those units were deployed elsewhere. So we need to protect ourselves. Thank you. Kevin, I, I want to thank, take this moment and thank uh, you from Ian and myself for sitting down and doing this. Um, your leadership during the Alberta wildfires is one that people should look at and potentially write a book about in future days. But um, I, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're getting ready to head into a council meeting, but uh, thank you so much for taking this time and chatting with us today. Well, thanks for the opportunity to talk about uh, what happened here in Edison and our thoughts and prayers are with all the other communities in Northern Alberta that are still dealing with a very, very uh, dangerous, unfortunate situation.